Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at some new makeup. I picked up a lot of these items from Sephora. We have the new Makeup Forever foundation. We have some lipsticks. Everything here is a first impression, except I have used the formulas of the Sephora collection items before, and the mascara we're featuring today is not first impression. I've been using this for several days now. So overall, let's go ahead, have some fun with a quick get ready with me. I'd love to know your thoughts. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and play around with some new items. I picked up the new Makeup Forever HD Skin Hydro Glow. They have this in full size and more travel friendly sizes. This is the 12 milliliter, so this is the mini. And then I picked up a Sephora lipstick. Actually, I picked up two, so we'll play with one of those. I got one of the new Milk Jelly Sticks. So these are the cooling water jelly tints. I have the shade Splash. And then I picked up a new Sephora Luminizer and a new contour because this shade looked like it could be really good. So let's go ahead and just see how these are. Again, these are gonna be first impressions, but I do have a mascara I wanna share with you that is not from Sephora, but it, um, you know, it's actually from Queen Musia. They sent this to me after they saw my lipstick video and I have to say, I love the mascara. Like this is a new favorite. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this is my bare skin. I actually just had hot chocolate, so I'm a little flushed because I'm pretty warm. We're gonna start off with a primer. I'm using this Chanel in the Icy Beige shade. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on, focusing primarily on my cheeks. Just put a little bit the rest of my face, but I want most of that shine to be here. And then I'm actually gonna add a little bit of the Frosty White just under the eyes. So here's the frosty white. Just gonna get a tiny bit here and put this on right underneath. Just focusing where I want it a little bit brighter here. And it's honestly doesn't make a major difference once you have the foundation on top, but I feel like I do notice a subtle difference. For eyes, I'm gonna take the Pat McGrath primer and this is gonna be in, well, it's in the shade clear and just gonna add a little bit of that here. And I like this primer. I think it is a nice eyeshadow primer. It's uh, one of the more moisturizing ones, but it still works to prolong the color, prevent some creasing. However, if you have really oily lids, I do think that there are others that are stronger than this one at preventing creasing. But for my skin right now, with the change of seasons, it's a little bit drier. This one works really well for me. So for the Milk Hydro Jelly Tint, I want to try it underneath the foundation and on top. So we're gonna start with this. We'll put this on the right side underneath the foundation. And I picked up the shade Splash. You can see we have plastic packaging here. And I have to say, you can see it's actually a thin plastic, which I appreciate because we don't have too much product waste then. And then here's the stick. So. This actually reminded me of the, I forget what they were called, but they were from Tarte. I used to use them so many years ago. And that's what it made me think of when I first saw it. This actually feels a little bit, I, I would say a little bit more liquidy upon first swipe than the Tarte ones do. They, they had a little bit more resistance rubbing it onto the skin. So let's just go ahead and then you can see how lightly you can get this on or you can build this up. So let's build the right side up. Let me bring you in just a little closer. All right, so this is on top of the primers and you know, I'm gonna actually take a brush. I'm gonna take the Sonia G Mini Base just to kind of blend that a little bit and let's put some on the brush itself. All right, so here is Splash on its own. Now let's take a look at the foundation. And I picked up shade 1R02. If you're looking at purchasing one of the smaller sizes, they do not have their full shade range. It's meant more, I guess, as a tester to kind of get an idea of what shade works for you. I always have a hard time finding the right shade in Makeup Forever. And so I went with the lightest cool shade. I have to say it looks a little bit deeper than it did online. So let's start by putting this on top of the blush and I'm using the Refer 31. This is one of my favorite foundation brushes. 
So on top of the jelly tint, we'll just kind of pounce a bit. You can see we have pretty sheer coverage here with the foundation. Let's get a little bit on the brush here. So I can tell right off the bat, the foundation shade, it's a little bit too deep, a little too peachy for my skin tone. So definitely glad I went with the small one. It's a pretty thin liquidy foundation. Let's go ahead and do the other side. And let me bring you in up close so you can see this finish. So here you can see the foundation and how it goes on. It's a nice finish. It is thin. It's a buildable formula. I would say it's sheer to medium. So here's the side with the blush. Here's the side without. And here it is from a, a distance. So you can see overall it is a nice finish. You've got kind of this subtle dewy finish to it. And I think it's a pretty finish to it, but the color is not the perfect match for me. You can see it is gonna be a little bit yellow. It's more of that peachy with a little bit of yellow, not quite orange, but a little peachier. So uh, just something to note there. Now, before we move on to the jelly tint, let's go in with a contour. And I wanted to try this both as a cheek product as well as on the eyes today. And just one thing to note, the Sephora products, they do come taped down here, so they are sealed in that sense. So if you get one that is easy to open, I wouldn't purchase that one. And the lipsticks actually come encased in plastic. I already peeled that off. So just something I know about the packaging. Now this shade here is number one, fair to light in their contour powder. There we go, now it's focusing. So you can see, you know, it definitely looks a bit more gray than some contour powder powders, which is the way it should be. So let's bring it in. I'm taking the Chikahoto F04, which is an angled cheek brush. This is one of my favorites for bronzer and contour as well as blush. So just gonna get a little product here and let's just bring it in here. You can see we definitely have gray right off the bat. Let's do this on the side without the blush so we can really see the color isolate it. So it's definitely, I actually really like the color. You do need to be careful to make sure it doesn't look like a bruise. So I definitely need to blend mine a bit better, but I think it's a great contour shade. And I find that it's pretty hard to find a good contour shade, so I really like it. I'm just gonna take my foundation brush and just tap over it a little bit, just to kind of soften it, blend it in with the skin, and there. So you can still see it, but it definitely looks a bit more subtle. All right, so here's the contour up close. Here it is, the side with the jelly tint. Let's go ahead and put this on very lightly over here and when you touch it it feels there's a little tackiness it's a little little sticky but it does tend to kind of go away i wouldn't say it sinks in completely it can feel a little bit even with the foundation on top i can still feel a little bit of the tackiness from the jelly stick because i did put it on so thickly i would say they feel about the same I think both ways look good, but I actually think I like it put on sheerly on top of the foundation just a little bit more because I can use less product. Now, this does come with a plastic cap here in addition to the lid. So I would recommend keeping this as well to just kind of keep it nice and fresh. So here's the jelly. Let's move on to the highlighter and then we'll move on to the eyes. So the highlighter is going to be shade 06 Rose Quartz. And I just thought it looked really pretty and it wasn't too pink, it wasn't too champagne, didn't look too gold. Look at this. So let's go ahead and just swatch this here. 
feel like the swatch is a little bit hard to see up so close. Doesn't seem to be focusing well. We'll take a look at this again in a second. Now for highlight, I'm taking the Nikki LaRose N14. This is the BK Beauty collaboration. We'll go into the highlight with this. And you know, I just realized I didn't put on any concealer today, but mm, I think we'll just skip it. You can see that can definitely be pretty luminous there. I have to say, I like this brush for a uh, highlight, but I also really like it for concealer, which is what made me think that I didn't put it on. I do use this one for concealer a lot. So here's the Rose Quartz from a distance. To say, I like it. I think it's a nice highlighter, doesn't break the bank, and I think it's a really pretty color. Formula seems really nice. So let's go ahead and take a look at the contour shade as eyeshadow. So I think I probably wanna pair the contour and the highlighter together just to get something a little bit different. And I'm gonna take this Sonia G Traditions brush. This is the T6, it's the large oversized one. And we are going to go ahead and put on the contour shade with that, kind of buff it in. So again, I have that Pat McGrath primer on and just kind of getting a nice soft layer of this on here. This is a great all over shadow brush, very soft. I have to say the persimmon dye, it's softer than I thought. I have some other brushes with this dye and these actually feel a lot softer than I expected based off of other brushes that I have. And I really like them. I've been reaching for these a lot because these brushes have really great product pickup they actually pick up a little bit better than your regular Go Hair brushes. So this is a contour shade, but let's apply a slightly deeper layer of that and then some shimmer. So I'm gonna take the Sonia G Lotus Builder brush, and this is just a flat shader brush, but it really helps to deposit a stronger wash of pigment. So I'm just gonna go over the lid space there and make that a little bit darker. I have to say, if you've been looking for a grayish taupe eyeshadow, it's a really pretty shade. I'm gonna use the same brush with the luminizer in the Rose Quartz. And let's just go ahead and put some of this on top. And then I'm just taking a really soft pencil brush. You can see this is pretty soft and very flexible. This is the KZ08, it is a discontinued brush, but uh, it's one of my favorites. So we're gonna go into the luminizer for the inner corner and just add a little bit of that there. And then we're going to add a little bit of the gray shadow right under the eyes. For eyeliner, I'm gonna try out this. This is one of the Make products I picked up with my order. This is their Waterproof Gel Eyeliner, and this is the shade Nebula. I just, I mean, lid was a little tight, so it should be, yep. So it is going to be a twist up, and you twist this color dial here. The black part gives you a little brush here, so can see the brush is actually thin and a bit more pointed than what we typically see on these. So that's kind of a nice change. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get a little bit of this. Oops. Super smooth. Wow, I have to say that goes on super smoothly like the Victoria Beckham, like that smooth, that silky. And I went to pull off the brush, but you can see we also have a sharpener here. So this has a sharpener and a brush. I'm just going to go ahead and soften this with the brush here. And the brush has quite a bit of stiffness to it, making it pretty ideal for softening this out. Then I'm gonna use the Surratt Lash Curler and 
then we're gonna go ahead and go in with the Musia mascara. And I have to say, I'm really, really loving that mascara. So here's the mascara. If you are looking for soft feathery lashes, this is the mascara for you. If you want like a ton of uh, volume and so forth, this isn't that. This is gonna give you that soft feathery look. You get some volume with this, you get some length with this, but really it's how defined and feathery your lashes look. And that's what I love about it. Look at that. For brows, I'm just going to take the uh, Tom Ford brow gel and I use the shade taupe. Just going to put a little bit of this on. All right, so here's everything so far. Let's take a look at the lipsticks. And I actually, I picked up two, but you know, let's just start with one today. So this is shade number 38. And this is their Lip Stories in Off Limits. And I picked this one up because, surprise, it's purple. <laughs> So this is the lipstick, kind of different here. The other shade I picked up is number, what number? Oh, I don't see a number on this one. Oh, here we go, 33, and it is called Wanderlust. Weird, but they actually have, you know, they're both the lip stories, but this one only has a number on the top, not on the bottom, <laughs> and this one has it on the bottom. So it's just something a little different. And this is kind of like this deep brown. Let's put a little bit of this on the edges. So I'm just gonna take a little bit. Uh, let's just darken this. So I'm just gonna take my finger and kinda So I'm just gonna clamp the edges a little bit and I'm gonna take Deep Void from Pat McGrath and go around the lips. So you can see that the deeper shade just kind of deepened things up a little bit and gave it a little bit more contrast. All right, so uh, this is the final look. Let's take a look at some swatches. So I have to say, the Makeup Forever Foundation did not oxidize as much as I expected it to. So I think the color actually, you know, it's a little bit deeper than what I would like, but it's not as dark as I thought it was initially because it really kind of stayed pretty much the same. So this is the shade and this is 1R02. Let's just do a quick comparison. We're gonna take a look at the Chanel Ultra Latent in BD01. This is one of my go-to shades and you can see that this is gonna be lighter, more ivory. We have Clay de Poe in I-10. And again, this one's gonna be a bit lighter and more ivory as well. This is really my perfect uh, foundation shade. But this one kind of reminds me of 00C Swan from Sisley in the Sisley cushion. So let's go ahead and put this one right here, right next to the Makeup Forever. So you can see the Sisley is actually a little bit more yellow, whereas Make It Forever is a little bit peachier, but they do have a similar depth of color. So just a few comparisons, hopefully that helps. As for the finish and the formula, I think it's a really nice formula, really nice finish. So again, I purchased the mini, which only comes in select shades, but they do have a full range of shades in the full size. And this is the HD Skin Hydra Glow. So the one I have is 12 milliliters, it's made in France, and we have a six month shelf life upon opening. Now, as for the jelly, this is just a fun product. You know, I think makeup should be fun. You've got makeup for like every day that maybe you don't wanna to have to think about, but every once in a while you wanna play around with some makeup. So this is the shade Splash. And again, we swatched it earlier. It's not really, I would say this sheer layer here, I can't feel this on my skin. This is basically sunken in. 
This one here where we built up, there's still a little bit of tackiness, but it's not sticky enough for anything to stick to it. It's just that I can feel the product on my skin. So overall, you know, I think that's a win. And again, I'll leave a wear update for this in the description box as well, you know, for any fading remarks and so forth. But I have to say, I think it's a really fun product and I like it. Now you can see we don't have a ton of product, which, you know, honestly, if these are anything like the Tarte ones, they dry up fairly quickly. So I think that's a good thing. So we have five grams of product. It has a six month shelf life upon opening and it's made in the US. Now, according to Milk Makeup, it's a sheer jelly lip and cheek stain made with cooling seawater and aloe for a long lasting wash of color. And I have to say, I think it feels really nice. Now, from my recollection of the Tarte ones, they were a little bit stickier, a little tackier than these. And uh, yeah, I think this is definitely a nice like updated version in my opinion. I think it's really cute, really fun. Now let's take a look at the Sephora contour shade. So this is contour in 01, fair to light. And it's just a nice gray. And there's a little bit of a taupey vibe to this. It's kind of like a grayish taupe, which also makes it great for eyeshadow. So this is it. I think it's a really beautiful contour. The formula is nice. It's a basic powder formula there. Not super powdery though. Uh, it definitely kind of stays where you put it. You can see there's no like kick up or anything in the pan. So overall, I think it's a nice product. And then we also have their colorful luminizer in shade number two, Rose Quartz. And this, we swatched it here. Just go over that a little bit. You can see it does have a little bit of a champagne vibe to it with a little bit of a warm rose to it, but it's pretty neutral. It's almost like, um, I would say candlelit with soft rose mixed together. And again, I think these are nice luminizers and you have, you can see here, I have that focus. You can see that the luminizer itself is gonna be shimmery very finely milled, but we don't have chunks of glitter. So, uh, you know, it's shimmery, but not glittery per se. So I think overall it's very nice. You can make it pretty blinding, but you can also wear it a little bit more subtly. Now let's take a look at the lipsticks. Now I do occasionally pick up some of the Sephora brand lipsticks just to, you know, have fun with some different colors. Now these are colors I wouldn't wear a ton of in general, but they looked really fun. So I wanted to try them. So this one here is shade 33 and let's put that here and you can see it's going to be kind of this deep reddish eggplant almost like if you had a deep plum like that reddish plum look but darker like mix that with like currant or blackberry even and you mix those together so this is really deep it's more of a burgundy eggplant mix so that was shade 33 which is called Wanderlust. Now 38 is called Off Limits and this is their lip stories which are mattes and this one here is going to be more of a dusty purple uh you know kind of oh, there's a little bit of mauve in here and even though these are matte they're really going to be more of a satin matte finish. You can see you don't get that dry matte look. It actually has a thin sheer more of a silicone texture on the lips. Very lightweight, very comfortable though. Now I did want to compare them to the Dries Van Noem purple lipsticks that came out last year. So this is the really deep matte ultraviolet shade. You can see right away that this is very different. This is like your true grape purple. And then we have this lighter lavender and I really like wearing these mixed together. This is, one here is a satin shade, but you can see how different they are, but they did kind of make me think of them just because they're such unique shades. I think it's a really beautiful shade, something a little different. Now the mascara I've used a few times already and I have to say I love it. I haven't experienced any flaking or smearing or anything like that throughout long days. This is called Mascara 2053 and according to Queen Musia, it features a cutting edge technology that combines astronomical length and volume with a lash growth extract. It effortlessly separates and coats each lash, providing an intense demi-matte black finish. And it's really nice. So it's a clean mascara. There is no fragrance. 
using efficacious vegan Italian plankton extract for strengthening and stimulating lash growth and density. It says there's a visible increase in eyelash length after 42 days of use. Now I've only used this for less than a week so far, so I can't say anything about that. It is 100% plant-based film former derived from pea starch, got 95% natural raw ingredients. You've got a bumblebee shaped brush that's derived from castor oil. It's anti-flake and raccoon eye proof technology. You can do a buildable texture. So it says one to two coats for a natural look, three or more coats for total drama. And I like to go for the more natural look with the lashes and I really like it. So we have nine milliliters of product. It is made in Italy. And again, it's clean, vegan, cruelty-free, fragrance, free and they have their full ingredients list on the website if you're interested and we do have a six month shelf life which is standard for mascaras but absolutely love this now as for the packaging it's heavy duty so i'm not sure exactly what it's made out of i bet it is some sort of plant-based plastic type thing but it's heavy like it would be metal but it has more of a um you know a smoother more plastic feeling texture like you would get from something like a plant-based plastic. So that's what it feels like to me. So I have to say, I really love that. And thank you to Queen Musia for sending this to me because uh, yeah, it's definitely going in my favorite mascaras right now, which, which by the way, some of my favorites are the Westman Atelier. This is the I Want You mascara. I love it in the brown shade but they did just recently mark the brown as limited edition. So I'm not sure how long this will be around. Other favorite everyday ones would be the Sicily So Stretch and the Surat Noir Lash Tint, which I would love to see in a brown as well. And then I have some favorite limited editions as well. I'm really also enjoying the Hermes uh, mascaras. This is now making it into my list of all time favorites. So very happy to see that now. All right, so I decided to pop on and do an eight hour update before I wash my face. So you can see how everything has worn. And overall, I think everything's held up really well. I did wipe off the lipstick when I was eating dinner uh, and it left like a little bit of color. And actually for the first like hour or two after I wiped it off, there was this gorgeous like kind of movie shade on the lips. I really liked it. So here are the eyes. And you can see that the eyeshadow, or rather the contour powder, has held up. Mascara has held up. You can see the luminosity of the sheen. I'll back you out just a little bit. All right, so this was the side that we put the cheek tint on underneath the foundation. You can see how much color is left. And then on this side, we had it on top. And I would say both sides are pretty comparable. There is a little bit of fading from the initial application, but color is still visible on both sides. You can see the foundation still looks really nice. It is a little bit dewier than it was earlier, uh, but there's no like oil breakthrough or anything yet, but I can feel a little bit of tackiness on my skin now. So it's, it's definitely, you know, starting to get a little bit oilier. Overall though, I'm impressed that the foundation did not have any like true oxidation really. The initial color stayed the same throughout the day. So that's pretty impressive. The finish gives you a nice kind of a dewy look without, you know, any issues. And I like how it has performed throughout the day. Again, the color is not the perfect shade for me, but overall, it's a really nice formula. The cheek tint, I think, did a great job. And I really like the contour and the highlighter. And of course, as I mentioned before, the mascara. So the lipsticks, I actually end up really liking the lipsticks. They're really comfortable. They stained really well. I had to really kind of wipe them off. I just didn't want to ingest any lipstick. So uh, yeah, they, they held up really well, though, until then. Everything here was so much fun to play with and I'm really happy with everything that I picked up. The foundation shade is not a perfect match, uh, so I'm glad I picked up the travel size. I do think that the finish is very nice, so I like the actual formula of the foundation. It's gonna be a thin serum-like style that goes from sheer to medium coverage, so very nice foundation. There is fragrance, but it's pretty subtle. 
but again, the color match is not the best. Uh, the jelly tint, tons of fun. Lips, just so much fun to play with. And these lipsticks are always so inexpensive that it is such a great way to, uh, you know, kind of play with some colors that maybe you won't wear a lot of. And I got these on sale too, which was, you know, even better. And as for the highlighter and the contour, I really like these. I like them on the eyes. I like them on the face. But this gray contour shade, I really think is such a great eyeshadow shade. So very happy with that. And yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts. So please share them down below in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you very soon. Have a great day.